All right, thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much uh, uh, also, of course, to Tatify for organizing this. I realize for some of you it's early morning, for others it's uh, late in the evening or even midnight. So uh, thanks for, uh, for having me here. Uh, my name is Jan Benedictus indeed. I'm the founder of uh, Fonto. Um, and I don't want to talk too much about Fonto, the tool, but a bit more like on the, I would say the strategic uh, thoughts that are behind Fonto uh, and that we kind of like summarize in the future of documents. Um, so a few words about Fonto. Uh, our mission is really to say we want to make it easy for essentially anyone to create, edit and review structured content. Uh, and I think one of the main uh, key points of that is that we, we want people to be able to manage and author and edit structured content directly. So without any conversions coming in between. And essentially that means that we are trying to help organizations that have made mostly the um, strategic choice to shift from a unstructured format uh, oriented process to a structured content process. Um, and we try to do so by engaging their authors. Um, and I, I saw already some comments uh, here and earlier, here and earlier, that of course engaging authors uh, into a new way of working is one of the hardest things to do. Uh, yet we're trying to do this. Um, we do so by providing Fonto, which is a structured authoring uh, solution or a structured authoring platform. It's web-based, uh, so it's prepared for uh, online collaboration, um, and it can be configured for, for a schema. Um, that means that Fonto is not only in use in standardization organizations, uh, but also in other industries like publishing, uh, technical documentation, aviation, life sciences, uh, but also uh, very much in uh, standardization. Um, currently, uh, Fonto is being piloted and rolled out at ISO, IEC, Senelec. Uh, a number of national organizations, and then a number of, uh, I would say, specialized uh, SDOs. Um, and why we do this is that, of course, by making it possible that authors, without any specific training, but still are working in the structured content format them directly, is that we kind of like try to leverage on the value of a standard like NISO SDS. Um, you could say that as long as you cannot author in a standard uh, or in the schema, that it's, it's mere added value is more in content exchange, maybe publishing, but we kind of like want to alleviate that or leverage that and say, okay, um, by authoring in the structured source content directly, you're kind of creating a platform, an opportunity to do a lot of innovations in terms of um, uh, documentation and documentation publishing. And uh, it was nice to see that already, uh, even in the previous talk, there was a lot of talk about uh, publishing to multiple formats, but we see uh, perhaps an even more disruption or mere fundamental disruption in the way that uh, organizations and people are thinking of documents and documentation. And um, some of that work uh, and some of those insights uh, are very nicely summarized in, in a uh, report that was published by Forrester only last uh, December. And uh, for anyone working in documentation, I would recommend this, this read. Uh, I'm happy to share the URL afterwards. Um, that's essentially saying that documents uh, and documentation after say almost a generation, like 25, 30 years, what is it that we do? What you see is what you get um, authoring. Um, that that vision and the way of thinking about documents will, will fundamentally change. And one of the key takeaways that they say is that documents will be data-driven and purpose-built for specific audiences. Um, if you think a little bit about the, uh, the driver behind that, behind that paradigm shift that they are predicting, um, then of course it's, it's kind of logical to think about a little bit how structured content has, has evolved and has started. And apparently it's, it's not apparently, but probably it's safe to say that uh, publishing and tech doc and perhaps also standards in a way, or at least to a certain extent, were a bit on the forefront of adopting uh, structured content. Um, but if you look for instance at publishing or tech doc, that whole data standard uh, or data schema based infrastructure or world, 
um, you see that those industries were probably somewhat further uh, advanced when it comes to replacing unstructured to structured uh, document and content management uh, workflows. A big driver, of course, for, for publishers was that in the late 90s, they were confronted uh, with, the, with the urgent need to, to start uh, publishing in digital formats uh, driven by a, a fairly sudden market demand even um, on a very efficient way. So they were quite early in adopting structured content and content authoring. Um, but, and that's also a bit sketched in that Forrester um, uh, article, there are, there's a trend that was perhaps reserved for that niche that is now becoming more uh, mainstream. And that is that business documents in general are, are going, are increasingly consumed or processed in an automated way. Um, we have seen actually from our own practice, some of our customers have seen uh, projects that want to not only publish entire standards maybe not only PDF, but in HTML, but also parts of the standards or bits from the standards, information from within the standards uh, on a specific way so that it can be deeply embedded uh, in knowledge systems, for instance, by the customers. Um, so this growing mismatch between automated consumption or processing of documents in general um, and the static for file formats as they are currently uh, in use, that is an increasing uh, problem. Maybe to give another example, uh, if you think of something like invoices or purchase orders, uh, you see that those documents typically are kind of like automatically processed by the receiver. Um, but even on a larger scale, if you think of pharma, uh, you see a fairly, maybe even somewhat surprising practice um, that on a fairly large scale, pharma companies are putting a lot of data into a document. They spend a lot of effort to get the data correctly in the documents, to send them off to the um, authorities, to, to in the next step, see the authorities spending a lot of time and a lot of effort to try to get the data and information again out of those documents. So the document format becomes a blocker or a, a bottleneck. Of course, there are, um, I would say solutions or partial solutions to alleviate that, that problem. Uh, the first whole area, of course, is text recognition, data extraction, uh, natural language processing, artificial intelligence, a whole set of technologies intended to interpret the information that is uh, stored in a document that's actually optimized for human reading. Um, a second approach that we see is a bit more from the sender. So you see that documents are kind of like enveloped or, or joined with a lot of metadata. So the, the fairly, uh, the, well, the essentially closed documents are then enriched with a whole wrapper of metadata that essentially is kind of like summarizing the key information that's actually present in that document. Forrester kind of describes, and we also kind of recognize this from, from our uh, practice, that that is in a way a, well, it's, it's finding the symptoms rather than uh, solving the core uh, or the root cause. Because solving the root cause is really to go to a structured and semantically tagged source format. That's probably not something that I would have to preach too much here in, in this audience. Um, but we see really that that has potential to kind of like become the leading paradigm in, in document and documentation in general. <clears throat> but of course, and it's also uh, mentioned here quite often and quite a bit already, um, authors are, are hard to uh, change in a way. Um, they are very, very strongly uh, bound to the current way of working. Um, I think that the, the phrase, everybody loves word is quite often heard. On the other hand, I think you could say that a lot of people hate word as well. Of course, there's a lot of ways to kind of like try to tweak words to do uh, what you do. Um, one way or another, um, the, 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 the opinion is that a lot of people like their current word processing uh, tool. However, we think that that is not a, 
a status quo. So that this may be today's state, but but we do see, uh, and actually I, I saw an interesting comment there on age and the adoption of Google Drive, because there are significant trends that in authoring uh, in general, that kind of like may open the door for a fundamental different way of thinking uh, about documents. So the first one is that there is a real blending of authoring and collaboration. So where the classical paradigm might have be or have been that an author is kind of like solitary working in uh, the word processor to kind of like finish the document and then send it off a workflow for approval, commenting and go back. But it's kind of like essentially a solitary thing that is fundamentally changing. If you look at Office 365, if you look at all kinds of online collaboration tools, if you look what we're doing with Fonto, and also if you look at something like Google Docs. Um, so it's, it's collaboration and authoring is blending. And in a way, it feels like at some point, you're kind of like deciding, okay, this version we're now gonna send off, but the collaboration doesn't per se stop. The other, um, I would say trend is that you see a shift from end-to-end -end and large multi-page documents to content assets. Uh, and this has for long been hard to accept for authors that they are kind of like merely contributing to a body of knowledge by submitting uh, content assets, fragments, components, uh, topics, however you would call them. Um, but still the trend is ongoing. <clears throat> if we look at how younger people, uh, for instance, here in our company are working, they are submitting, committing information to a bigger body. It's not so much that somebody owns a document. Of course, the whole area of content orchestration becomes more important when this, is, this trend is ongoing. Of course, assisted and automated writing. So we see that authoring uh, and writing, um, even though it is still an art perhaps, and it still has a lot of room for creativity, um, but it's also becoming more and more assisted. So we all appreciate things like spell check, grammar check, but that extends, of course, to the checks of all kinds of references. Maybe already the generation of pieces of content, the type ahead kind of features. Um, and the trend is that these kind of features are kind of like going to help the author to not only write, but also perhaps semantically tag their content. And then last, but certainly not least, there is that blurring line between content and data. So we see, and if you adopt a uh, content schema, a schema controlled XML format as your source format, then you're probably going to move away from formatting for the way it should look towards tagging for what it means. So when you go away from tagging data points, tagging phrases, paragraphs, or even sections, for how they should look, how they should be outputted, and you go towards um, the semantics, the meaning of it, then you see that actually content becomes data in a way. And data embedded in content also keeps it value. Um, and we see that, that trend going on. <clears throat> of course, neither of these trends is kind of like autonomously changing the, the whole document uh, perception, but altogether, we feel that there's a lot of momentum gaining, a lot of momentum growing, um, that, that the documents and the future documents is going to be fairly fundamentally different from what it is today. So going back to that report of the future of documents um, that says, okay, documents will be data-driven and will be purpose-built for the intended audiences. Um, we strongly believe in that. And, um, we think that that means that documents or content or documentation, however you should call this, will be componentized, they will be structured and they will be semantically tagged, which then makes them universal uh, to be used uh, in, in various ways and, 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 and output channels. Um, of course, and I don't have to, have to kind of like say that here, but of course, as standards development organizations are professional document producing factories. Um, so it's not surprising that if we look at the strategy of ISO uh, that they just published earlier this year, that we kind of like see, see kind of alignment with the trends as, as Forrester describes them as we see them. So ISO standards uh, will be delivered more quickly um, in a form that the market asks for. Um, and from Fonto, we are 
just very grateful and happy to be uh, a small part of that future of documents for, for standards. Thank you.